Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on none other than the current uh, buzzing news about the uh, Tomb of Cleopatra. I have done a video on TikTok about this. It is getting some virality and there are a plethora of questions that I simply can't keep answering in TikTok. So I have come to the long form video decision uh, to do a whole YouTube video on it and try and get in as much information as I can to answer the plethora of questions. Um, if you feel like that is something you want to watch, please stick around, like and subscribe and let's cue the music. All right, my stop what you're doing TikTok video about Cleopatra's tomb is um, really exciting, very exciting. There's a lot of discourse between different archaeologists about um, the possibilities, the impossibilities, the issues arising with the dig. So I think it's just important to talk about it as it is. So let's get started. I first want to talk about uh, Dr. Kathleen Martinez, who is the archaeologist in charge and has been in charge of this dig for, I don't know, years. I think she's been on this quest to find Cleopatra for 15 years now. Um, then I'll talk about the actual site and then I want to touch on uh, Cleopatra and who she was and all that. Hey, so who is uh, Dr. Kathleen Martinez? She is a archaeologist who has a special interest in Egypt um, and she has spent 15 years looking for the uh, tomb of Cleopatra. Now, uh, Kathleen Martinez is such an inspirational woman in general. She started her career out as a criminal, uh, a criminal lawyer in the Dominican Republic. So she is a woman of color. She is Latinx. Um, and she, uh, after practicing law, went and got a master's in archaeology and uh, just went after her dreams, essentially. Um, so basically, um, she is very passionate about finding Cleopatra's tomb. And as I mentioned, she spent 15 years doing so. Um, her story is quite, is very exciting. So um, basically she believed that the tomb would be likely in the uh, Tapasiris Magna, which is just outside of the city of Alexandria, which is in Egypt. Now, um, the city of Alexandria was the booming city in the Ptolemy Empire, which was at the very end, the very last empire of ancient Egypt. Now, Cleopatra was the last queen, the last pharaoh of Egypt before Rome came and completely conquered. Um, so, uh, well, the conquering of Egypt led to Cleopatra's um, suicide with her lover, Mark Antony. Now, um, when uh, Kathleen went in, she uh, found that, yes, the temple was there and um, Zahi Hawass, who is was in charge of the um, uh, Egyptian Supreme Council of Antiquities at the time, gave her two months, two months only, to prove her hypothesis. Um, it was nothing. It, it was kind of like... It's almost an insult, right, to her hypothesis, uh, because two months is nothing. But she found something in those two months. Two months was obviously going by fast. It seemed a, a doomed, doomed to fail. Um, but just as the two months was coming to an end, they found coins um, in the temple of uh, Tapasiris Magna. So um, they hit gold. And after the coins were found, they then hit tunnels. So these tunnels that they hit um, were essentially allowed her to continue digging. And she has done for, uh, sorry, <laughs> for years and years and years now. Now, the original tunnels that were found were offshoot tunnels. And that the tunnels that we're talking about in the find in 2020 um, are not the tunnels that were originally found. So uh, the original finding of these tunnels, a lot of them were underwater. 
they have been um they haven't all been explored at this point but they did find outside of the temple area uh, mass grave sites so they have found bodies they have found mummies and what that indicated is that within the area there would be a royal burial just due to the way that the Egyptians worked so um even if it's not Cleopatra there will be a royal burial likely somewhere in this temple region so um, that information allowed Dr uh, Martinez to continue digging uh, it was satisfactory uh, for the um, Antiquities Council um, and so she has done so and there are some really great um, videos with her speaking I have no idea how to embed a video into post editing so I'm literally gonna film <laughs> I'm gonna film it of 10 years of study of Cleopatra's uh, historical character and uh, I, I need to to come to Egypt to go to the field to see these remains of this temple to be sure that this uh, remains has the, the possibility of being the, the lost tomb of Cleopatra after Three months studying the area, I realized that it was the perfect place for Cleopatra's tomb. If there is one percent of a chance that the last queen of Egypt could be buried there, it's my duty to search for her. Now, uh, Martinez has said a few times that she would love to keep people more updated on her finds, um, but it's only the Egyptian authorities that can up basically release the press so um she said uh in i'm not sure when it was that the end is in in sight this was last year in december so um very interesting like i said bodies have been found um uh coins with cleopatra's face with mark antony's face have been found um and like i mentioned bodies around the area and just the other day it was announced that a brand new set of tunnels that that i guess were the main segments of under the temple uh were found now the reason this is so uh captivating in and of itself is that it's the first time in egypt that a tunnel system has been found directly under a temple right um also the 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 temple uh, the tunnels under the temple are of greek structure greco-roman structure because there is a very similar uh underground tunnel system in greece so um we know that it was built by most likely greek engineers um and thirdly, obviously, there are a lot of indicators that it was from Cleopatra's time. Um, so it is very exciting. Uh, it's also very exciting because Cleopatra said, no man will find my tomb in reference to the fact that the Romans were after her, right? Um, the Romans were after her and her lover, Mark Antony, and they committed suicide together. And that's obviously what she was intending when she said that statement. Uh, and no, and as we, as far as we know, no Romans ever did find her tomb. Um, I think it's very fitting that it is a female leading the case when she made that statement about no man will find my tomb. So, Let's move on to the, the find. So what was found? Um, in this temple, in the um, Tapasiris Magna, uh, it is a temple dedicated to Osiris and um, it was believed that, uh, that Osiris was, uh, sorry, that Cleopatra, she believed she was a reincarnation of the goddess Isis, which is very normal for pharaohs to be godlike figures in ancient Egyptian history, um, and that Mark Antony was Osiris. So it, it does fit, uh, mythologically speaking. Um, now, a 4,300 foot long tunnel, which was 
43 feet under the temple uh, has been found and I, I'll show a <laughs> I'll show a picture of the entrance shaft and the tunnel um, and then also a picture of the artifacts that have been found um, and then a picture of the uh, Greek style tunnel that I was just talking about so very exciting very exciting that there's a pe press relief press release as well because like I said it it's the Egyptian authorities that have to decide to release press so that's exciting for Dr. Uh, Martinez um, okay so that's pretty much what we know um, let's talk about some of the information that people are saying it's probably not um, so there have been in recent years I think 15 people that have claimed to have found Cleopatra and none of them were substantiated uh, so there is that um, there also is, I'm just trying to think what the other objections were. The other objections is that she's been on this dig for so long. Um, but I think it needs to be taken into consideration the seasons and how Egyptian digs work and the vigorous, <laughs> the vigorous, uh, legalities, uh, and official things that you need to go through every single year to allow you to be able to dig and also they have gotten a lot from this site there's like the mass graves they found mummies they found all these artifacts and they found all of these offshoot tunnels that were covered in water so that just sounds like um they had to suck the water out of the areas to be able to investigate them so the the dig has been very busy um uh so i don't know if i agree completely with the with if 15 years is like a, a symbol that it may not be her who knows but regardless dr martinez is convinced she she believes wholeheartedly that cleopatra is there um or at least was there and i think she puts it very well in saying that even if there's a one percent chance that cleopatra is there it's her duty to continue to look for her i really love that um, and I also love, uh, that, what was my thought? I just lost my thought. So yeah, she's very passionate about it and so she should be. Uh, regardless if they don't find Cleopatra, this is an incredible find of, um, of previously unknown, uh, Egyptian history. So ir irrespective the stuff she has found has been um, now um just to also touch on a lot of people are like leave her alone um it's an interesting topic um when it comes to archaeology archaeology is a science and people are like a lot of people are commenting you know you just want to rob the graves this is not robbing graves it's if anything the opposite it's trying to restore the history and get an accurate depiction of um what what is there what is the history that we have lost um now people have interesting views on digging up uh bodies which i personally don't like I, I had this girl stitch me and she was like, imagine if in 2000 years people were digging up your body and we're like, wow, in 2022, they use caskets. And, and I was like listening and I was like, that would be really cool because they would be learning about my time and learning about me. And that to me is very, a very sacred thing. In my opinion, it's, it's adding to the, the field of knowledge about this this beautiful amazing woman uh cleopatra and all that she did and we get an insight more into her life so i guess it's just uh, it's a, an issue for some people and i totally respect that that's some people's i guess way of thinking it's not something that i kind of share i i don't know if that's got to do with spiritual beliefs i'm i don't really know i um obviously if people were robbing graves if they were disrespecting graves whole different thing whole different thing um like they like egypt has gone through 
years, even back in, in contemporary times, the Egyptian people would loot and rob graves. Um, and in the 1800s, they would rob graves. It, it was an awful time and so much history was destroyed. But the respect in which um, Dr. Martinez and um, modern archaeologists have for these areas is is incredible. They are so delicate and um, everything's proceduralized. And I mean, you know, you can listen to her speaking about it. It's not disrespecting Cleopatra, it's the polar opposite. Um, it's to find more out about this amazing woman. And I heard it explained really well. Somebody asked, why do we need to dig up graves? It's because history, we have 3% of it estimated. And it's like having a puzzle that we don't even know what the full picture looks like. And each puzzle piece is, is completely blank until we pick it up and analyze it. And that's why the field of archaeology needs needs to find new things so that we can learn more about who we are as a human species. So I do, I, in my personal point of view, I think it's disrespectful to the scientists to say, just leave it alone because they have poured their entire career into this. And it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit disrespectful to the, to the past to, to refuse to learn to refuse to learn history I don't know that's just that might be controversial and but at the same time I do understand a lot of people have like spiritual or religious ideals about digging up tombs and things it's very interesting to me that the only time people are like leave it alone is when it happens to be an Egyptian find it's never whenever I'm talking about other parts of the like the world people don't seem to have that reaction to it um, and I think that's probably due to modern Hollywood and all the propaganda surrounding the curses of the pharaohs uh, which are simply just not true um, and people thinking that you know a disease could be you know it's it's I think a lot of misunderstanding around Egypt and that sort of that sort of idea that curses will be unleashed. Um, it's just not the case. The whole Howard Carter finding King Tut and a curse being released is just nonsense. It, it didn't happen. Um, so yeah, that's my sort of thoughts on that. So let's actually talk about Ale uh, Cleopatra the seventh and uh, her reign and her life. So Cleopatra was uh, destined to become the last queen of the Macedonian dynasty that was uh, ruling Egypt between um, between their death of Alexander the Great in 323 BCE all the way through to its annexation by Rome in 30 BCE. Uh, the line, the Ptolemy line, had been founded by Alexander's general. When Alexander died, basically all his generals sort of took over areas. And so Ptolemy, his his general, took over the Egyptian throne. And so that's where Cleopatra's line is from. So she was a part, she was ethnically Greek or Macedonian. Macedon was a part of the Greek, the ancient Greek empire at the time but she was Egyptian in the fact that she was born in Egypt. Um, but yes, she was a white uh, woman. Um, and there's been many artist reconstructions. I'll post a couple here. Uh, she was not Egyptian in, um, in ethnicity, just in, I hope that makes sense. Um, so, uh, <sighs> A lot of the Ptolemies were not loved, but Cleopatra, sorry, um, a lot of them refused to learn the language and that sort of thing. Um, now, she uh, was married to her brother. Um, she uh, was 18 when she married her older brother. Um, he was older than her by about eight years and um, 
became the dominant ruler. The evidence then shows that the first decree in which Ptolemy is named precedes Cleopatra was in October of 50 BCE. Um, soon after, Cleopatra was then forced to flee Egypt for Syria uh, because um, uh, she'd raised, sorry, there had been raised an army of, in 48 BCE, uh, that was facing her brother who was on the throne at the time. So she fled to Syria while this was taking place. Then there was a murder of um, a Roman general, Pompey, um, who had sought refuge. Uh, and then Julius Caesar came along um, and brought temporary peace. Um, Cleo, being the brilliant woman she is, was, she was very highly educated, spoke no languages. Uh, realized she needed Roman support or more specifically Caesar's support um, if she was going to regain her throne from her brother. She wanted to be the queen. She wanted to be on that throne. Um, each was determined to use each other. So Caesar sought the money that, because he had a massive amount of debt <laughs> incurred with um, Cleopatra's father. Uh, and so he had the motive, Cleopatra had the motive, and they um, they combined forces and kicked off her brother, and Cleopatra becomes queen of Egypt alongside Caesar. They became lovers, and um, he spent the, the winter in Alexandria, um, and Roman reinforcements arrived the following spring. Um, that's when the brother died. He drowned in the Nile. Anyway, Cleopatra, um, then married her younger brother, which is very confusing because she was lovers with Caesar at the time. So yeah, it was a bit weird. Uh, but she was restored to the, the throne. Um, anyway, then she gave birth to, um, uh, Ptolemy Caesar, Caesar's son, uh, while well, she was married to her brother. Uh, we don't actually know if Caesar was the father, but his nickname was Caesar I am. Um, so anyway, uh, it basically took two years. It took Caesar two years to extinguish the last flames of the Pompe uh, Pomp the Pompeian opposition. Uh, and then Cleo came with her husband, brother, and son to visit Caesar, who were well-known lovers, which is weird, but anyway. Um, she was accommodated in Caesar's private villa along the Tiber River, um, and Cleopatra was in Rome when Caesar was murdered by the Senate. So she was there. Uh, and that would have been hectic because he was stabbed by 23 of his closest confidants in the Senate, even Brutus. So obviously, you know, she returns to Alexand Alexandria in 44 BCE uh, and her co-ruler slash brother slash husband died. Um, now Cleopatra was a single lady uh, ruling with her infant son. Um, then in 42 BC, so two years later, uh, the Battle of Philippi, Phil Philippi, anyway, uh, happened. Now, Mark Anthony became the apparent heir of Caesar's authority at this time. Um, and for Caesar's great nephew, uh, Octavian, that was an issue because he Octavian was like quite a sickly boy. So there was kind of a fight for Rome, basically. So um, Antony, Mark Antony, uh, was the ruler of Rome's sort of Eastern territories and sent for Cleopatra so that she might explain her role after Caesar's death. And um, she sent back gifts uh, and really helped Mark Antony. Um, and yeah. 
So then Cleopatra makes this grand entrance into Asia Minor on this boat uh, with all these wings and elaborate things dressed up as the goddess Osiris. Uh, sorry, Isis, oh my goodness. Um, and Antony was like literally immediately infatuated with her, forgetting his wife because he had a wife in Italy, but obviously, whatever. So anyway, uh, <laughs> they go back to Alexandria and Cleo and Antony form a society of the inimitable livers whose members lived what some historians interpreted a life of debauchery and folly and others have uh, equated it not so but to the ded a dedication to the cult of Dionysus who was um, an ancient Greek god. Anyway in 40 BCE Cleopatra gave birth to two twins they were Marks um, and then when Rome came in and wanted to obviously rule uh, Egypt, um, basically they took their lives rather than letting Rome come and capture them. Mark, uh, basically Mark stabbed himself and it said that Cleopatra put a serpent to her heart and died from the poison. Um, the means to her death is questionable, people aren't sure, um, because we haven't found that, but the asp, the snake, is a symbol of divine royalty. So she had been queen for 22 years when she died, um, and Antony, 11. Um, now they were buried together, uh, as both of them had wished, um, and yeah, we don't, we, we've never found that until hopefully now. Now, the Romans tr want, wanted to find her body. Um, they tried very hard uh, and that is sort of the premise as to why she was so adamant that no Romans found her tomb because she didn't want them to because they were essentially enemies at that point. Um, then, yeah, Romans obviously came in and conquered. Uh, and that's that's why there are a lot of defaming stories around Cleopatra after she died, because the Romans wanted to make her seem like a seductress, a, you know, sexually prerogative sort of figure to try to, I guess, lessen her impact on, on the world at that point. And so then for all these years since then, uh, we've really not been able to verify things like her death, verify, uh, you know, uh, lots of different things. We have writings from Plutarch, but he was, wasn't contemporary to the time. So there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of questions surrounding Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And if we were to find their tombs, there would be such a wealth of knowledge provided to us about her um, and about, uh, yeah, just a deeper understanding on, to, on who she was. Now, this is interesting as well because at the moment Zahi Hawass has a uh, exhibition in Egypt called, I think, The Daughters of the Nile, um, and it has obviously this news has broken alongside, uh, timely, uh, alongside that exhibition, alongside with um, a uh, a fairly uh, strong, confident um, announcement that Zahi believes he's found Nefertiti's mummy as well. So this is all happening. It's very exciting. It's it's a lot of people are choosing not to comment on it until it's until it's like released that it is or isn't her. I've just chosen to speak about it because it's frankly really exciting. Um, and whether or not they find Cleopatra in this particular area or not, there's still a, it's still good, you know, like there's still a lot of things that have been found. Um, and you know, it, it makes people excited to learn about history. And I think that's my major purpose and goal. So I hope you have learned something about Cleopatra and about Egypt and about the end of Egypt in this video. And if you have, I would love it if you could subscribe, it really help me out. Um, I really am hoping to get to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. 
that's my goal um i have uh, hopefully a couple of videos coming out pretty soon um but as always just comment below if you have a video that you really want me to cover and i will happily do so thanks for watching guys see you on the next one